my name is Karen Finch and I'm from Legally Yours and this is my first Facebook Live, uh, one of many um, that I hope to do throughout 2017. Um, so essentially what Legally Yours is, is we are trying to turn or we are turning the legal fraternity on its head. So what we want to do is basically um, shift the focus so that it's about client outcomes um, and it's transparent and, and there's certainty and it's fixed fee. So that's what we're all about. So today I want to talk to you about family law, which is an area of the law that I'm pretty passionate about. I'm um, a qualified lawyer that specialised in the area of family law. Um, I'm non-practising at the moment, um, but it's an area that I feel really strongly about and passionately about and um, and I'm keen to kind of really make sure that we can um, you know, get it right. So on a daily basis, I am encountered with nightmare stories around family law. So I guess probably starting off one of the biggest ones, domestic violence is in the media at the moment. Um, there's a strong push um, about exposing domestic violence and those sorts of things. I think there's a major fallacy out there that a lot of people think domestic violence victims are women in lower socioeconomic circumstances, um, and that's actually not the case. Um, you know, there is a whole um, middle class, and even, I mean, domestic violence, it's, it goes across all class levels. It doesn't matter what sort of money or socioeconomic factor you are, you can be a victim of domestic violence. And domestic violence in itself doesn't necessarily mean physical, it can be emotional, financial. Um, you know, there's a whole range of factors that go in there. Um, and, you know, we have a number of clients that come to us that um, have, you know, they might be quite rich in terms of assets, um, but their partner has controlled the finances. And because of that mere fact, they're in a domestic violent relationship, but they can't actually get legal representation because most lawyers will not represent you unless you can put a certain amount of money in trust up front um, before they, call, they do any action for you. Um, and I guess the issue with that is, is that if you don't have access to cash, well, then what are you going to do? You might have an asset at the end, um, and it's very rare for a lawyer to take your matter on and be able to defer that payment, um, you know, until the end, until there's a, a property settlement. Um, but those women still need help. And, you know, we, we get those sort of clients come through on a daily basis where they, they literally need that, that help, um, and they've been turned away by family lawyers. Um, the other one is where, you know, we have clients that come through that, um, you know, being pushed into the court process. So they'll go and see a lawyer. The lawyer will be very vague in terms of um, costing out the process. They'll sort of say, oh, it's anywhere between twenty to $30,000, not quite sure. Depends on what the other side says. Um, and then, you know, the other day I had a, a, a client call who basically had spent $15,000 with their lawyer and actually had nothing. A um, couple of letters had gone back and forth and that was pretty much it. Um, and so, you know, $15,000 later, they, they had nothing sort of reached in their matter. Um, I guess in these examples, what I'm trying to explain is that, you know, with all of these, the only people that ever get paid are the lawyers. So even if you don't come out with an agreement um, or any orders or you get lost in that process, the lawyers will always guarantee to get their payment through. So. Um, you know, hence the, the topic and title of this video, you know, who wins in a family law matter? Well, unfortunately, the way the system is at present, it tends to be the family lawyers. So um, I guess what I want to talk about is shifting that focus around the lawyers always being paid and the lawyer controlling that process and putting that power back into clients' hands. So what I feel is the right way to go is that Clients should be able to understand exactly what it's going to cost them from the outset. Um, you know, lawyers will try to bamboo, bamboozle you with the process and will try and say to you, you know, I can't really give an a prop, you know, a, a structured or a fixed cost on this or that because, you know, we just don't know how the process is going to run. Um, and I guess I'm here to say that, you know, <laughs> that's an absolute fallacy. You definitely can. Well, in family law, the underlying principles that the family court process have put in place is that every outcome should be just and equitable. And at all points, the family court process, they want the parties to be making those decisions. You know, at the end of the day, you and your ex-partner, whether there's children involved or assets or, um, you know, mortgages or homes, those sorts of things, they're yours. It's a very personal situation. Um, and long after the courts have made their decisions, you two are going to be the ones that have to follow those orders. So, 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that at all points, you should be in control of that process. You should be, you know, as long as it's just and equitable between both those parties, um, you should be understanding what that process is and knowing exactly what that's going to cost. I mean, I certainly know from my own personal perspective that I don't want to be spending my hard-earned hard assets and seeing them whittled away being spent on lawyers' fees. I'd rather put that towards, you know, setting up my own self in a, in a home and making sure that my children are cared for and those sorts of things. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is what is predictable is the process. So a lawyer should be able to give you a complimentary phone consultation when you approach them. They should be able to cost out each stage with stage first one being always negotiation. So there'll always be a period of back and forth between lawyers or between you and your ex-partner um, discussing you know, what sort of things are going to happen in the interim, whether it be with contact with children or mortgage payments or car payments, all those sorts of things. So. Uh, a lawyer should be able to say to you that's going to take sort of, um, you know, cost X amount for five letters back and forth with responses. If you can't reach any kind of form of agreement, then it tends to go on to some mediation. Um, the court also has conciliation conferences as part of their process. So the whole time trying to get both sides of the parties to make these agreements. Um, and I guess in relation to that, it's really important to bear in mind that these, this is your life, it's your children's lives, and you should understand exactly what it's going to cost. There's nothing worse. And, you know, this is a story I hear all the time from clients that say, oh, I didn't want to pick up the phone and call my lawyer because I wasn't sure how it was going to cost me because you get these surprise invoices, um, you know, for $5,000 and think, well, what was that for? And hold on, I didn't get through on that phone call. Did they charge you for it? Um, so what I'm saying to you, if you're going through a separation, and you're seeking out a lawyer, make sure they can give you that complimentary phone consultation. Make sure and ask them to cost out that process. They can cost out negotiation. They can cost out you know, assistance with mediation. They can cost out what it's going to cost you to make that application and appear at those hearings for you. Um, of course, there are going to be times when perhaps you know, things will go differently um, and you know, the matter might go, but the lawyer should be always be transparent and should be able to come back to you and say, circumstances have changed, this is now what it's going to cost, are you happy for me to go ahead? Um, so I guess bearing in mind, if you keep the power and control um, and, you know, your lawyer is always putting your issues um, and, you know, you in control of what you're going to pay, then you'll only pay that amount. So um, I guess there'll be a more detailed blog on our website um, which will kind of outline what, what I've sort of discussed to you today. Um, but if you'd like to go to our website, um, www.legallyyours.com.au um, and you can always request a quote if you are going through a separation or we'll have more details there in relation to this blog. But I'm Karen Finch from Legally Yours. I hope this has been um, helpful and, you know, I'm here if you'd like to have a chat. Thank you.